Hello and welcome to episode 210 of the Sasaga podcast. If you feel like you're always firefighting at work, this episode is for you. Ready? Here we go. You're listening to the Sasaga podcast and you're about to discover how to excel in your work without being exhausted through practical techniques that you can start using right now. I'm your host, Helen Iwata, a bilingual Brit with a three-decade career in Tokyo. I'm an award-winning women's success and business communication coach, speaker, writer, wife, and mother. Every week here on the show, I share my personal stories and favorite techniques around the four phases of the Sasaga success cycle, around self-care, planning, communication, and productivity to help you enjoy more success and less stress. You'll also have the chance to listen in on heartfelt and eye-opening conversations with inspiring guests and hear answers to your questions to help you use your expertise, time, and energy better, and quite simply to bring more joy into your work and life. This is the Sasaga Podcast. Hello, lovely listener. How are you doing? I invite you to take a moment to reflect. How often are you rushing to the next meeting, task or project without really completing or making the most of what you were just doing? When I think back to my corporate days here in Japan, I know I spent much of my time fighting fires, dealing with what was most urgent and right in front of me and often interrupting what I was in the middle of. I now realize that in many cases, I could have stopped the fires from breaking out in the first place and used my time, energy, and expertise much more effectively if I'd done things differently. And even today, as an entrepreneur running my own business, I still sometimes overlook this. I move on to the next thing without making the most of what I was working on. And in fact, I realized in two ways this week how this was the case for me. First, I was listening to a podcast where I was interviewed just over two years ago. And at that time, I was excited about a new project that had heaps of potential. But today, I recognize that I got distracted with other shiny objects and I didn't make the most of that initial opportunity. And second, I discovered that one of my YouTube videos from 2016, yes, I was a YouTuber in 2016, I kind of forgot about that, it had over 23,000 views and is still ranking as my sixth most viewed video. Clearly, the topic is something that people are looking for help with, but I'd already moved on to creating something new. So in today's episode of the Sasaka podcast, you will hear how to know whether firefighting is a problem for you, if you don't know about that already, how shiny object syndrome is related to firefighting, and four steps to alleviate firefighting and shiny object syndrome. So I'm sure that it's obvious to you already that what I'm talking about today is less effort and more impact because fighting fires and rushing from one thing to the next takes effort and you lose out on potential impact. So let's start by looking at how to know whether firefighting is a problem for you. Firefighting in business is dealing with problems as they arise rather than planning strategically to avoid them. And according to a Harvard Business Review article by Roger Bone, who's an associate professor at the University of California at San Diego, you're a victim of firefighting if three of the following are chronic within your business unit or division. Okay, I'll say these slowly so that you can take them in and recognize whether three or more of these apply to you and your work. So first of all, there isn't enough time to solve all the problems. Is that a yes or a no for you? Solutions are incomplete. Problems recur and cascade. Urgency supersedes importance. 
many problems become crises. Performance drops. So, is that a yes for three or more for you? Well, if so, don't worry, you are definitely not alone. And I'm going to give you four steps to stop this firefighting behavior. Well, perhaps it's better to say alleviate. I don't want to overpromise. And the extent to which you reduce your firefighting depends on how much you put what I'm sharing with you into practice. Firefighting is extremely common in the corporate world, especially in big and busy organizations where colleagues and clients keep coming at you with what's most urgent for them. Can you relate to that? And for entrepreneurs, I see a related issue is shiny object syndrome. Shiny object syndrome is when you're constantly moving from one exciting thing to the next without completing and making the most of what you started. And it's especially common in entrepreneurs because entrepreneurs usually aren't afraid of starting new things. In fact, they get quite a thrill out of it. And that is definitely me. I realize though that shiny object syndrome can lead to unnecessary firefighting because you can easily leave things unplanned, uncommunicated or incomplete and crises can erupt as a result. The four steps that I'm going to share with you to help alleviate firefighting and shiny object syndrome actually follow the four phases of the Sasaga success cycle. And if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that the Sasaga success cycle is based on your menstrual cycle, ladies, or if you're not menstruating, it's based on your natural ups and downs due to your hormonal changes. And I've spoken before about hormonal changes for men too. In this particular case that I'm talking about, you can use these steps in a time frame that makes most sense for you. It doesn't matter what your hormones are doing. It's these steps that are really, really important. I mean, great if you can also coincide it with your hormones, but let's just really focus on these steps. So number one is care for you. You may have heard me say before that self-care isn't just about your physical well-being. It's also about your mental and emotional well-being. And this includes setting boundaries and saying no. In the case of firefighting, it may seem hard, but it's essential to start saying no to colleagues and possibly even clients who keep coming to you with what they see as urgent requests and saying no to yourself when you are tempted to start something new. And for tips on how to say no, you can listen to episode 193 of the Sasaga podcast, which you'll find in the show notes. All right, so that was care for you. That's the first one. Step two, create your plan. Even if you find it painful, even if it seems to take so long, planning will help you to prevent future firefighting because you'll be better prepared and it will help you to know exactly what's required to complete a project before moving on to the next thing. And this is also your opportunity to reflect on whether you're really making the most of the effort that you're putting into each task or project. Okay, so that was number two, create your plan. Number three, communicate your ideas. Share your plan with your team members or colleagues or your coach if you have one and invite them to challenge your plan. This is tremendously valuable for me because I know that I easily overestimate what I can do in a limited time. And I spoke about this in episode 163 of the Sasaka podcast, which was how long is this going to take? And we'll link to that in the show notes too. And actually, as I'm recording this episode just this morning, we had our um, online team meeting, the first team meeting of the year. And I went through the plan for this year, especially for this quarter. And it was great to get the input from my team and they were reassured to have the plan from me as well. So that's going to save us a lot of firefighting in the future. Mm. And step number four is to complete your tasks. So getting things done to completion without getting distracted is such a challenge for many professionals. 
And you may find it helpful to review your goals daily to remind yourself of what you're going to complete. I also recommend getting really clear on why what you're doing is important to you to give you that extra motivation toward the finish line. Now, I want to be absolutely clear here that I am not yet doing all these things perfectly, which is why I had those two realizations this week about the project that I didn't make the most of and the YouTube video topic that I could have helped more people with. And by the way, I'm planning to put more focus on YouTube and share useful videos with you there in 2023. And you can subscribe and click the little bell to get notifications when I upload something new. Just go to YouTube and search for Helen Iwata and I believe you will find me very, very easily there. Um, do make sure it's subscribe and you, you click that little bell. That little bell is really important for notifications. I didn't know about that until recently. I see it's on the, it's on YouTube. It's also on LinkedIn as well. It's really useful. Um, sharing these tips to alleviate firefighting with you is a great reminder for me of what's important and it helps me to keep improving too so that I can support more people like you, dear listener, to excel in your work without feeling exhausted. And finally, one other tremendously helpful way to do things better and potentially prevent fires from breaking out is to learn from others. You'll find great value from talking with colleagues or others in your industry about their experiences and listening to their experiences. And I'm really looking forward to an opportunity to hear from others in an upcoming virtual summit, which is called damn, wish somebody would have told me that. <laughs> and this is hosted by my business coach and positioning expert, Patty Dominguez. She was my guest on episode 144 of the Sasaga podcast. And you remember I spoke about listening to me, uh, me listening to an interview on someone else's podcast. Well, that was actually me on Patty's Positioning to Profit podcast, episode 77. And if you would like to listen to either of those or both of those, you will find the links in the show notes. Lots and lots of links in the show notes. So do go and have a look at those. I will be one of the speakers in the Damn Wish Somebody Would Have Told Me That virtual summit. And I'll be sharing my top tips along with over 30 other fabulous female entrepreneurs from around the world. Such an honor to be a part of an event like this. And if you're running your own business or thinking about moving out of corp the corporate world and into entrepreneurship, this is definitely, definitely worth watching. I haven't seen all the content yet. I do know quite a few of those speakers and I know they have some great value to deliver. And it's especially great because it is free to sign up. You will find my affiliate link for this in the show notes. And affiliate link means that I do receive a small commission if, for example, you invest in the VIP pass. And that includes all the recordings to watch at your le leisure and much more as well. And I highly recommend that if you don't want to feel pressured to absorb all the great advice in a limited time. We've created a special link to make it really easy for you to sign up for free or for the VIP pass if you'd like to. Just go to sasagacommunications.com forward slash patty, P-A-T-T-Y, sasagacommunications.com forward slash patty. And I've already signed up. <laughs> Okay, today we talked about how to know whether firefighting is a problem for you. Is it? <laughs> how shiny object syndrome is related to firefighting. Four steps to alleviate firefighting and shiny object syndrome. And just to recap, they were the four phases of the Sasaga success cycle. Number one, care for you. Most important. Number two, create your plan. Number three, communicate your ideas. And four, complete your tasks, including reminding yourself of why what you're doing is meaningful. 
So what was most meaningful for you, dear listener, in this episode of the Sasaga podcast? I would love to read your comments on any of my social media posts. I'm on Instagram at Helen Iwata or LinkedIn as Helen Iwata. And also remember that you can like and comment on my YouTube videos as well. You will find me on YouTube at Helen Iwata, (laughs) keeping things simple. You can also find today's show notes at sasagacommunications.com forward slash 210210. And that's, of course, with a link to the damn wish somebody would have told me that virtual summit, as well as all those other podcast episodes that I mentioned today and that famous YouTube video with over 23,000 views. Cannot believe that. And it's actually, it's just a really, really simple video, but it's very practical tips. Thank you so much for listening. Make it a brilliant, complete and joyful day. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Sasaga podcast. Wow, the fact that you listened all the way to the end here tells me how committed you are to your personal and professional development. If you enjoyed this episode, I invite you to tell your friends or colleagues about the Sasaga podcast. Spread the tips and the joy. Help to make everybody's lives better. And you may even like to rate and review the Sasaga podcast in your favorite podcast player to help others find it. And if you'd like to hear more from me, be sure you're regularly reading my free weekly newsletter, Sasaga Tips for You. I'll send you practical techniques, resources, and inspiration every Tuesday in English and Japanese. Just go to sasagacommunications.com forward slash subscribe to subscribe. And I look forward to supporting you.